Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about GI stasis in rabbits. GI stasis is one of the most common diseases that we see in rabbits. As a veterinary professional, I have seen a few of these cases since I've been in practice the last year. But when I was in school, this is probably one of the most common reasons that I saw rabbits coming into the teaching hospital at Iowa State. What is GI stasis in rabbits? Well, GI stasis in rabbits is a slowdown of the GI tract leading to bad bacteria overgrowing the GI tract and producing gas. Now in rabbits, gas produces a lot of pain. And when there's a lot of pain in rabbits, they end up eating a lot less than they normally would. And when there's a lot less eating, then they slow down their GI tract even more, leading to a very bad downward spiral. When this happens, this can eventually lead to death. Uh, it can also lead to very severe pain and can be very difficult to manage. So how do rabbits get GI stasis? Well, the most common cause of GI stasis is not enough fiber in their diet. So what happens when your rabbit doesn't have enough fiber in their diet? Well, essentially the gut is stimulated by the roughage going through their intestinal tract. So when your bunny ha eats a bunch of fiber, that roughage is actually going to stimulate the GI tract and the GI nervous system, which is going to promote gut motility. And when you have gut motility, you're going to move things through faster. You're going to get rid of all of that bad bacteria that's at the end of the colon and not allowing it to grow up further into the intestinal tract where it can cause problems. Other diseases that can potentially stimulate GI stasis or other things that can cause GI stasis in your bunny would include other painful diseases like kidney disease or potentially like a dental disease, which you can learn about more here. The other things would be stress. So a very stressful event may cause your rabbit to stop eating or not eat as much because of how they are feeling. So when your rabbit stops eating, their gut is going to quit moving as much. And when this happens, we're gonna go through that same cycle all over again. Sometimes painful injuries, such as wounds or broken limbs, or even things like arthritis can cause even more GI stasis because the pain may cause them to stop eating. Another thing that sometimes will cause problems in rabbits is parasitic infections. This can cause them to basically go into GI stasis because their gut is so full of parasites that it's not moving correctly. Or in some rare cases, there can be so many parasites that your rabbit can't move things through them. They're basically an obstruction. So what are the common symptoms of GI stasis in rabbits? Well, one of the most common things that we will see is a painful hunched position. And this is basically a rabbit, sometimes it's known as like the meatloaf position, where their front feet and their back feet are really close together, their back is really high up, and they just don't look comfortable. The other things that to look for would be if your rabbit is unwilling to eat, um, or if there are varied fecal pellet sizes. Uh, so if you have really small ones and some normal sized ones. And one little trick that you really should be aware of is if you see fecal ornaments, and that's where you get hair binding up between fecal pellets, that means that you're probably not getting enough fiber and your rabbit could go into GI stasis. So be aware of those. And if you see them, correct that diet immediately if you can. Now on a veterinary physical exam, some things that we really look for is do we hear gut sounds? So we'll auscultate, put our stethoscope in our ears and put it on the patient and listen to their gut. And if we can't hear any gut sounds or if it's very, very infrequent, that's going to be probably the quickest way for us to diagnose, yes, this is for sure GI stasis. Another thing that can be really, really helpful is taking some x-rays. It'll help us to see one, is there a whole bunch of gas in the intestinal tract of our bunny? And if so, that really tells us, hey, this is most likely what's going on. Another thing this, this can help us diagnose is, is there an obstruction? So is there something that needs to be surgically removed rather than just something that we can deal with through supportive care? Other things that your vet may do is an ultrasound. Uh, if they have that capability, it can be very helpful to diagnose other problems like a liver lobe torsion, which can happen more commonly in giant breed rabbits. So what should you do if your bunny has GI stasis or you think it has GI stasis? Well, the first thing you should do is talk to your veterinarian. 
Um, you're, this is gonna probably get old on this channel, but your veterinarian can be a really good resource for pet health. That's what they were trained to do, especially if you have a veterinarian who is comfortable with rabbits and is what we call bunny savvy um, in the bunny world, so to speak. It can be really helpful for you guys to, to talk to them even before any of this ever happens and have them help you come up with a plan of if this ever does happen, what should you do? If you can't get them to a veterinarian, and I understand that can happen because if you don't have a, an exotic veterinarian in your area or if you don't have ability to get to them on the weekend or after hours or anything like that, the first thing you should start doing is do some massaging and some massaging of their intestinal tract and their belly. And this can be really helpful to basically keep things moving and stimulate maybe some really tough areas to get out. And it can help move the gas around so that maybe you'll relieve a little bit of pain and then they maybe will be willing to eat. And along with this, you know, really use your Bunny First Aid Kit, which will be the next video. And if it's already up, there should be a card up here. And if there isn't, let me know in the comments and I'll fix it. One other thing is a rescue diet. And this would be something like Oxbow's Critical Care. And I know Sherwood has one as well. And those are the two really good rabbit food brands that I'm aware of. I'm sure there's a few others out there that are good, uh, but these two really take it to the next level in my opinion. Something that you should have in your rescue kit or your first aid kit is pediatric semethicone. And there should be a link down below for this. And this is basically gas X and it will help dissipate and prevent gas production if possible. And this should be given every six to eight hours and you should give about one cc. To be clear, I'm not prescribing this and I'm not saying you should or should not use this, but you probably should use this if you don't have another option and you think you're rapid in GI stasis. It's a relatively safe medication, not without any side effects, but it's relatively safe. And in these quantities at this dosing interval, you should be just fine. Once they start pooping, make sure that you're getting them back onto hay and a hay only diet or hay and a few fresh vegetables to give them some more fluids. And the other thing is to get them exercising, get them running around. If they're starting to be willing to run around, that's a good sign and keep them at it and get them some hay. So what will your vet do that maybe you can't do at home? As I've kind of already gone over a lot of the things that your vet would recommend you do at home, here are some things that you your vet can do that you probably can't do at home. And the first thing is radiographs. And this is very helpful to make sure that you're diagnosing the correct thing, that the diagnosis is the correct diagnosis and that you're not missing something that's gonna come back and bite you in the butt later. The other thing is IV fluids. IV fluids are super helpful or fluids under the skin called sub-Q fluids. And the reason that they're so helpful is that when the body is inundated with a large volume of fluids, the GI tract will actually start to excrete some of these fluids. And this will allow the GI tract to make the intestinal contents, the poop, the ingesta, a lot easier to move along through the GI tract. And when this happens, you can maybe get some gas and some feces out and get their gut moving again. Another thing is pain management. If your vet is able to initiate pain management in a timely manner, sometimes they can keep them eating even if they're already starting to produce some gas. And this will help stimulate the gut to move along a little bit quicker. So being that this is a relatively common problem in rabbits as far as actual disease processes go, how can you prevent this? What can you do to prevent it? Well, probably the number one thing you can do is making sure your rabbit gets enough fiber. So this is enough grass-based hay. I can't say this enough. Um, we'll talk about a sludgy bladder a different day, but making sure you're getting them some sort of Timothy or orchard grass hay is super, super helpful in their whole health. Making sure that they're getting over 50% of their diet, better yet would be 75 to 80% of their diet being hay. Another thing that kind of ties in with this is making sure you're checking your rabbit's teeth and watching their teeth. If they're eating enough hay, most likely their teeth are going to be good, but some rabbits still will need some help along the way. And if you wanna check out my video about rabbit teeth, it'll be up here in a card. So make sure that your rabbit also has a good pellet as a really good rabbit pellet is going to be high in fiber and low in carbohydrates and sugars. 
So Oxbow produces a couple really good foods. Sherwood also, from what I understand, produces some very good foods as well. You guys know your rabbits better than anybody else. And if your rabbit is acting abnormal, if something is wrong, look at it and don't just dismiss it. Um, if something seems off, it probably is. And it may be really subtle signs that you may not even think about, but you really should pay attention to. And some of these subtle signs like changes in the size of fecal pellets may not seem all that important at the beginning, but as things get worse or progress, sometimes you're like, oh, that's what that was, and it's too late. So if you see something, if it doesn't feel right, doesn't look right, talk to your veterinarian, and they may say, let's give it a little time, let's see how it goes, or they may say, hey, come in, and they may find something that could have caused some pretty severe issues down the road. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, there'll be a link to a couple of my other rabbit videos down below. There should be a card over here with my rabbit playlist. And this is all of my videos about rabbit health, rabbit care, and rabbit veterinary specific topics. So as I add to this library and playlist, hopefully you guys enjoy it. And we will plan on seeing you in the next video. Have a good one.